It was St. Georgi who laid the true scientific foundations for the electric view of humans and of all plants and animals for that matter. It was him who went on to speak of plasma existing in every molecule in the body, saying each molecule contains something that can be looked upon as an electron gas pervading the whole molecule. The details of what St. Georgi says in his books relate directly to the nature, structure, and workings of intelligent plasma entities. In his book Bioenergetics, he grasped the importance of a mass of water containing protected or walled cells within itself, which themselves are made entirely of water. These boundary layers within water are analogous to the boundary layers known as sheaths found within plasmas. All plasmoids are enclosed by sheaths. That is how they maintain their identities. That water and plasma, which St. Georgi showed to be present throughout human bodies, spontaneously generate structures and have a fundamental meaning. Researchers such as Kapitsa, Bostik, and Saitovich have shown that some of the plasmoids contain hot plasmas, some cold plasmas, some dusty plasmas, some non-dusty voids, some containing specific impurities that hinder or accentuate the flows of charged currents precisely in the manner of electronic semiconductors and transistors. Phenomenon called tunneling takes place between them, and there are also superconducting and superfluid portions and sections. As Freeman Cope discovered, similar dynamics of currents of electricity exists within our bodies, and this can be the interface between the plasma inside us and our physical bodies, and also between our plasma cells and universal electromagnetic fields and perhaps microwaves. In other words, a plasma-based mechanism was discovered by which our physical bodies are affected by fields. But it was another brilliant scientist, Viktor Inushin, who pushed the boundary much further in his writings about bioplasma. Very few Western scientists were ever allowed to meet Inushin, since he was considered by the former Soviet Union to be their most brilliant and important expert in the field of parapsychology with its many military applications, such as remote viewing. He envisaged a plasmatic state within living organisms, which, in contrast to inorganic plasma, would be a cold plasma possessing a high degree of order. And what is more extraordinary, he believed that this cold plasma could chiefly be found in the brain. So, to make it clear, bioplasma is the name given to that plasma which he was convinced joined with the physical body and helped it to operate, or even coordinated and guided its growth and development. Inushin and others, doubtless without realizing it, have duplicated ancient Egyptians' reasoning and consider plasma to exist in space, and bioplasma to exist inside our bodies, literally as our double. In one of the articles in open access on this research, authors stated the following, quote, a living organism can be described as a biological field or biofield. We have obtained evidence that a fifth state of matter, bioplasma, exists as a part of each organism's biofield. Bioplasma consists of ions, free electrons, and free protons. It is highly conductive and provides opportunities for the accumulation and transfer of energy within the organism, as well as among different organisms. Bioplasma appears to be concentrated in the brain and the spinal cord. At times, it may extend considerable distances from the organism, raising the possibility of telepathic and psychokinetic phenomena. It was the latter aspects that so interested the military and security services of the Soviet Union, in connection with what they called psychotronics and remote viewing, and they were careful to keep Inutian under wraps. Remember when we discussed the feeding of a double in ancient Egypt tradition and its connection to the images? And that food itself is not important, but the image of it is. What if these images of the objects are actually kind of holograms that we can create in our brains? According to the bioplasma studies of Inutian and Sedlak, the plasma particles constituting the bioplasma in the body set up highly structured waves that serve as an energy network. The energies stored in the network form an internal biological field. Remarkable as it may seem, this biological field has a complex broadband wave structure of great stability 
that stores holograms. They based this on ideas of Professor Carl Pribram, who believed that holographic processes operated within the human brain and were used in the storing and activation of memories in particular. Isn't it a direct analogy with the food for the man's double if we will suggest that memory images are in fact some kind of holograms? Pribram was a proponent of the theory brain as a hologram laying a basis of neural holographic processes in our brains. The important moment to realize is that the Kordelewski clouds could have enormous intelligence and would probably have fantastically advanced holographic capabilities which would be used not only to store their massive amounts of information, but also to generate images in any form, whether as waveforms, pure data, or optical images that could be seen by the eye. Now, technically, none of this poses any problem. The clouds would really be able to extract 3D images of the kind familiar to us and transmit them to our brains if they wished to do so. Could it be the source of the UAP phenomenon manifestations? The source that visually deceives our holographic imagination library? All such early work relating to electrical and magnetic influences upon the human body had a big effect on another young scientist named Alexander Pressman. Pressman said that every human body in the upright position was essentially an ellipsoid a sort of elongated sphere largely composed of electrically conductive water and acts as an organic antenna, receiving waves and currents from outside and communicating them to the body's interior. The application of this theory to biology has shown that in addition to energetic interactions, informational interactions play a significant role in biological processes. Such interactions entail the conversion of information its transmission, coding, and storage. The biological effects due to these interactions depend on the amount of information introduced into it. The information-carrying signal merely causes the redistribution of the energy of the system itself and regulates the processes occurring in it. These ideas were further developed by David Bohm in his concepts of active information, in which he focused on the information rather than the energy. He imagined the entire universe as a hologram, in the sense that this driving ordering process is equally present everywhere in the universe. It underlies our intelligence, the intelligence we see in animals and plants, and the intelligence we saw in the movements of plasma. If a physical matter is very rare in the universe and is not the predominant component of what exists, the obvious conclusion is that if it is full of life forms, including intelligent ones, the majority of them will not be made of physical matter. They will instead be made of plasma. And that may include us. One key to all these clouds coming alive is in the supply of ready food. For plasma entities, that means a reliable flow of particles. Plasma clouds eat particles in the way that whales eat plankton. Plasmas compete for food, so there may also be a survival of the fittest factor driving their evolution. Like intelligent entities, plasmas may cooperate as well as compete, so that long-range order events may involve not only communication, but cooperation in the process of achieving the complexity necessary for intelligence. But what is the place of humans in this competition? As soon as the images of the Egyptian gods appeared in the tomb, the position of man in the double world radically changed. Previously, in the very ancient tradition, the double lived in a world where no power stood over him, but now a deity dwells next to him. Man could be depicted now only in one form next to God during praying and in the scenes of worship that later become the only element of the visual design of tombs. The independence of the double world when it played a special role disappears. The concept of the afterlife judgment appears instead. The absolute independence of the owner of a double world was lost forever. Small and cozy as it was now replaced by a huge afterlife universe inhabited by gods who need to be asked for mercy. In this universe, man's double was small and insignificant, 
He could find his place in it only thanks to special guidebooks, such as the Book of the Dead and numerous later books. Magic, which is unnecessary in the double world, becomes obligatory, and without it, a person cannot cope. Previously, the double world was the unchanged continuation of an earthly life. Death was not a tragedy, it was treated calmly and with dignity. The late afterlife was completely different. It was uncomfortable, mysterious, dangerous, so that the transition to it was the most serious frontier, and death turned to be a collapse of everything familiar around a person. It was an enemy now that had to be fought. The double world as such is dying in the New Kingdom, a terribly confusing afterlife of late time created, so dramatically different from what we find in ancient times. The striking similarities between ancient and very modern concepts are that our bodies have many of the plasma features, and that in addition to our meat bodies, we also have plasma doubles, and these interact with a cosmic plasma web. Ancient Egyptians might be correct after all, and we may indeed have a plasma double that shapes and sustains our physical body. If true, we ourselves are in a sense plasmoids, and our dense matter's bodies made of those rare things, atoms, are like smart overcoats that we discard when we die. It seems like this knowledge once known has created a world that is really extremely realistic in the sense of copying reality in the very heart of the Egyptian worldview, a phenomenon that we will not meet anywhere else in ancient history. It is interesting that in the letters that are written from Mesopotamia to Egypt, in these letters, Ka is translated as a personal god, meaning a Ka or double, and a personal guardian god are the same thing. But we understand that this personal guardian god is not something different from a person, it is the person himself. It's just that earthy person should become like his double. You see, that is like the reverse perspective here. So it is not the earth that is like the image of heaven, but the heaven is an image of the earth. As a matter of fact, as we have already found out, everything was done in Egypt that way. So the heaven was reflected in the earth. 